One of the best ways to get into astronomy is to get a decent pair of binoculars and a star map and simply start exploring the night sky. This is why in this video I'm going to focus on binoculars and highlight some of the aspects that in my opinion make up a good pair of astronomy binoculars. So without further ado, let's get this video on the road. Hi, I'm Bogdan Damian and welcome to Video Observatory. Even before getting your first telescope, it might be a good idea to first invest a bit of money in a good pair of binoculars. The reason for this is twofold. First, you will have a device that is light, compact and thus very easy to take out. The key aspect here is easy to transport. And this is because the best astronomy device is the one you use the most. It doesn't matter if you have a huge telescope capable of showing you the faintest details in the night sky if you are going to use it once or twice a year. So a very portable pair of binoculars will automatically become your most used device for observing the night sky. The second reason is that a decent pair of binoculars will continue to be useful even after you've gotten your first telescope. It will help you navigate the night sky and identify targets much more easily. Now, to simplify things a bit and to avoid making an hour-long video, today I will only focus on optical binoculars, ignoring monoculars, night vision binoculars and other related devices. I might make another video in the future where I go over these, but for now I'll stick to regular binoculars. Alright, since binoculars are primarily used during the day for land-based observations, the first question that an astronomer might ask is whether there is a special type of binoculars that is better suited for night sky observations. Well. The answer is yes and no. You see, generally speaking, there is nothing to keep you pointing a regular pair of binoculars up and looking at the stars with it. Pretty much all of them will be able to show you more than you are able to see with your naked eye. So this is why one could answer the question with a resounding guess. But I argue that the answer is not that simple and that there are binoculars out there that are capable of doing a better job at astronomy than others. And this is due to some key features that, if present, will make a pair of binoculars very capable of showing some amazing details in the sky. So, let's take a deeper look at which ones these are. First, let's start with the design. There are two main types of binoculars on the market today. Binoculars that use a roof prism and binoculars that use a poro prism design. This refers to their optical configuration and the main difference between the two is the way they transmit light through the prism system. These prisms are necessary in order to correct the inverted image produced by the objective lens elements. So, roof prism binoculars have a straight through design where the objective lens and the eyepieces are in line with each other and the prisms are placed one after the other in a straight line between these. This allows for a more compact and streamlined design which is easier to hold and carry around. Their name comes from the path the light has to travel once it reaches the prisms. The shape roughly represents the roof of a house. Each of the two prism segments per side must have at least one surface that is coated, either with a silver or dielectric coating, in order for it to work. The light is reflected five times in total inside the prism element, until it is sent towards the eyepieces. It is considerably more complex to manufacture a good roof prism system, since the light loss on the reflective surfaces must be kept as low as possible. Sometimes so-called Abe König prisms are used. Here the surfaces do not need to be coated because of their unique design. 
In general, the views produced by roof prism binoculars are less bright and with a bit less contrast compared to polo prism binoculars in the same price segment. The roof prism design is however very robust and is fairly resistant to shocks. If they get damaged or misaligned though, they can be difficult to repair. On the other hand, Poro Prism binoculars have a tried and tested design where the objective lenses are offset from the eyepieces. This creates a zigzag path for the light to travel through the two prism segments per side, which allows for a wide separation between the objective lenses and the eyepieces. This wider separation gives the binoculars a better depth perception a wider field of view and a better light transmission when compared to roof prism binoculars, resulting in a more pronounced 3D effect and usually a brighter image. This design being less complex than the roof prism is in general also less expensive and easier to repair should it get damaged. Named after the designer Ingrazio Porro, the Poro binoculars also feature an external focusing wheel, whereas roof brace binoculars have an internal focusing worm. The latter is in general the preferred version because it is often more stable and better protected against shocks and moisture. Poro prism binoculars are generally less expensive than roof prism binoculars, but they are usually also larger and heavier due to their design. Roof prism binoculars are often more expensive, but they offer a more compact design and are usually preferred for activities where portability is important, such as hiking or bird watching. For astronomy applications, however, both designs should work pretty well. With the Poro design having a small advantage over the roof prism design, in my opinion. This is because, in theory, it is able to provide brighter views with better separation. But this obviously will vary from device to device and across the different price segments. Alright. But the design of the prism elements inside the housing is not the only factor that plays an important role when determining whether a pair of binoculars is well suited for astronomy applications. There are other features that can have a big impact on image quality and viewing comfort. So let's take a look at those as well. Let's first look at the objective lenses. These are the lens elements situated in front of the binoculars and are responsible for gathering the light and then refracting it towards the prism elements situated inside the housing. These lens elements are usually of an achromatic design made out of normal quality glass and are generally able to produce good images. These type of binoculars are inexpensive and can represent a decent first option to get when you start out with astronomy. But if you are looking for better corrected images with minimal chromatic aberrations, then consider binoculars with special low dispersion ED lenses. You can take this idea even further and look at apochromatic binoculars with three lens elements per side. This triplet design will improve images even further, eliminating optical aberrations altogether. They do cost, however, significantly more than the other options and are also heavier. It is not only the lenses that play an important role in producing a good image, but the lens coatings are very important as well. Lens coatings work by reducing the amount of reflection that occurs at the surface of the lens. They are made out of a thin layer of materials that have different refractive indices. These layers are applied to the lens surfaces in a precise manner to create an interference pattern that cancels out reflected light. Therefore, lens coatings can improve the transmission rate, reduce unwanted internal light reflections and light scattering. 
So a good pair of binoculars for astronomy applications should have fully multi-coated lenses, which means all lens surfaces should be coated, not only the front surface. Also the lens edges should be blackened as well for improved contrast. Another important aspect for visual astronomy is the field of view. More specifically, its sharpness, width and flatness. Since we are talking about low magnifications here, magnification only plays a secondary role here. In my opinion, the field of view and its characteristics is much more important. First of all, the field of view should be sharp all the way up to the edge, but this is a tall order for any optical instrument. It is doable, but the manufacturer will likely ask for a premium price for such a device. Since binoculars are usually designed to be used during the day time for land-based observations, where the field of view is usually filled with a huge variety of objects of different shape and sizes and that are on different focal planes, off-center sharpness doesn't play such a vital role here. In these conditions, a bit softer outlines near the edges of the field of view will be barely visible. Night sky observations, on the other hand, are much more demanding in this regard. Here you immediately notice if the stars near the edge of the field of view aren't visible as crisp points of light. Unfortunately, there isn't a specification for this that the manufacturers disclose in their products spec sheet. This is why I recommend first trying out a pair of binoculars before you finally buy them. The same applies for the flatness of the field of view. This refers to how fishbowl-like the views through the binoculars appear. Here, the flatter the field of view is, the better. The width of the field of view is measured in degrees and is something you will find in the binocular spec sheet. Here you want a wide field of view that will show you as much sky as possible when you look through. An angular field of view of 4 to 7 degrees depending on the magnification is desirable. Another aspect worth paying attention to is the eye relief. This being the distance from the eyepieces to your eyes at which you can see the whole field of view. A long eye relief is desired here as it will result in a more comfortable viewing experience since you won't need to bury your eyes into the eyepieces. This is especially important if you are wearing glasses and like to keep them on while observing. Here in my opinion a value of at least 15 millimeters should be desired. Ideally it's closer to 20 millimeters. Out of all the binoculars I had the chance to test up until now, I can recommend the popular 15x70 Skymaster from Celestron. It offers a good build quality and great optics for a reasonable price. Its only downside being that it's on the heavier side and this can make observing without a tripod a challenge. As a more lightweight alternative, I can also recommend the entry-level 12x42 roof top binoculars from Adacion. Just like the Skymaster, they feature great optics and good build quality while being more compact and lightweight. To answer the initial question whether there is a pair of binoculars out there that is especially well suited for astronomy, I would say yes, there is, but it's not necessarily a specific device from a certain manufacturer. As with any other piece of astronomy equipment, you will have to dig through product spec sheets and try out devices for yourself before finding the right one for your budget. Anyway, that's been it. I hope you all enjoyed it. Please don't forget to like and subscribe before you leave. This helps the channel out a lot. Thanks for watching and catch you guys in the next video.